What is good you guys welcome back to the airport welcome back to a brand new video in today's video we're going to be talking about whether the nba should put their season on pause and temporarily suspend the season or whether the nba should continue the season in the wake of all these health and safety protocols uh, we're going to be briefly talking about the heat Cavs game as well because that is tonight and yeah let's get right into it without further ado make sure y'all drop a like subscribe and comment down below and let's get right into it so the nba like i said um, it's been a big debate going on with fans, uh, in, in the NBA fans, Bulls fans, whatever you want to call it, Heat fans, like everyone has been saying, you know, we should suspend the season, uh, and, and wait for these players and health and safety protocols to come back. It's not really a good sight to see, man. As I'm, as I'm looking at this list right now, I don't know how accurate this is. This was published uh, a day ago, but I'm adding a player on here who just got into health and safety protocols from the Chicago Bulls. So this is about 24 players in the NBA that are in health and safety protocols right now most of them from the chicago bulls who have 10 representatives demar derozan zach levine Derek jones jr kobe white io Dusumu, stanley johnson javante green matt thomas uh troy brown jr as well as most recently elise johnson um that is 10 from that team the charlotte hornets have five in lamello rozier ish smith plumley and uh jalen jalen mcdaniels Every other team has one or two. The New York Knicks have two in RJ and Toppin, and every other team has one um, that are that are that are on this list. With the Celtics having Josh Richardson, Wizards with Kyle Kuzma, Grizzlies with John Morant, who's injured but is also in health and safety protocols, and the Heat, as we all know, with Caleb Martin, and the Nuggets with Austin Rivers, and finally the Pacers, the Pacers with Justin Holiday. Now, the most crazy thing about this is when I'm looking at the Chicago Bulls. Stanley Johnson was just signed with this team. I think Stanley Johnson had just signed three days ago because um, of the amount of players, you know, in health and safety protocols for them. And he suddenly is in health and safety protocols as well, which tells me that there might be a COVID outbreak or something like that in um, in the in, in 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 the Bulls in the Bulls, you know, camp or whatever. Because I don't know what's going on over there because. Um, we saw LeBron was in health and safety protocols for a minute, but it was a false positive or something like that. And uh, he said something fishy was going on, uh, which means that the, the league just, you know, out of randomly had him test positive for some odd reason because he had t tested negative eight or nine times after that consecutively, uh, which is why he was able to return to the lineup so quickly. Um, and I would assume it retweeted that tweet by LeBron. Uh, as soon as the news came out that he was in health and safety protocols as well, because, um, you know, and I and I don't know and I don't know what's going on with the NBA and, and, and this health and safety protocols. I don't know if this means that they have covid. Or I don't know if this means that they're exposed to people who have covid because, um, yeah, it's just very ambiguous. It's very up in the air. Like people don't really know the meaning of health and safety protocols, because you could say health and safety protocols or you could also substitute that with they have covid but we just don't know if those two definitions are interchangeable or not. But coming to the main argument, whether the NBA should suspend the season, pause the season, like I said, I've been seeing a lot of fans saying they should. I, I'm, I'm someone who agrees with this. And this is not just because the Heat um, have two players, their two best players are currently injured and I do wanna see them heal up. It's not even just because of that. It's just because, you know, if a team is going against the Chicago Bulls or a team is going against another team that has so many players in health and safety protocols, um this could mean that that team like the bulls or the hornets or a team that has upwards of five players on health and safety protocols could be having a covid 19 outbreak or something of the sort in their camp and you don't want to expose that to another team that you're facing on that day caleb martin got you know in, in the health and safety protocols as soon as um you know the day of actually like less than an hour before the heat game against the bulls caleb martin was in health and safety protocols so i don't know if it was because he was in contact during with the bulls players doing shoot around or whatever happened it could just be a big coincidence that it just happened on that day that we're playing the bulls but i don't know you know i just don't think we should risk it um i think teams should be able to get back healthy like the bulls is just unfortunate for them because they've been a really really good team one of the uh the the, the most fun teams to watch this season probably the biggest surprise uh, as far as no one really expected them to be the one or two seed in the in the Eastern Conference, and um, they have been that, and it's just it's just unfortunate for them because now they have ten they have uh, ten players in health and safety protocols that they can't really come back from that, um, and I I just really think that the the NBA should do something about this uh, because I just think that they have the they have the power to. Um, some people will say you know we should suspect we should um suspend some of these games and postpone individual games for later 
I'm going to tell you right now, it, it is very, very hard to uh, postpone individual games that teams have uh, later in the season. Um, and there are several reasons why. So I'm a big soccer fan. Um, this is a tangent, but it's very related to what I'm saying. I'm a big soccer fan. I love Manchester United. And in the Premier League, it is very easy to postpone individual games. And the reason being is that teams only, most teams only play once a week. So um, there's supposed to be a game between Manchester United and a team called Brentford tomorrow. That might be postponed because of a COVID-19 outbreak in Manchester United's uh, team facilities. So that is very easy to postpone because you only play one game per week. When you're in the NBA and you play a, a, a game every other day, it is very hard to fit in a game that you're not going to be playing somewhere in your schedule because that'll force you to play it back to back. That'll force you to do, you know, things that you're probably not wanting to do. Like you don't want to play two back to backs or you don't want to play. You don't want to play. You know, you don't want to have to face a team in a tough party reschedule when you're already down um, a lot of your players like it is very hard to sk schedule individual games. And on top of that, there are just too many teams um, in this COVID-19 health and safety protocol mix to uh, in order to uh, postpone individual games, because then you're going to have to postpone about 15 games because that's how many teams have players in health and safety protocols. So. If you're going to suspend 15 games and postpone them 15 games between teams uh, individually, because not only do you have to account for the team that has players in health and safety protocols, you also have to account for the team that they're facing. So the Bulls, I don't know what the Bulls schedule looks like, but if the Bulls are facing a team that does not have anyone in health and safety protocols, not only are you going to suspend the Bulls game, but you're, only, you're already going to suspend their game. So perfect example, the Bulls play the Pistons tomorrow. Um, if you want to, if you wanted to, you know, postpone the Bulls Pistons game, you do have to take into account that the Pistons schedule is also something that needs to be accounted for because you can't just say, oh, we're going to just postpone the game because of the Bulls uh, health and health and safety protocols and we'll just cater towards whatever the schedule the Bulls have. You also have to cater towards what schedule the Pistons have, which is tougher because you, you have two teams that play every other day and, you know, some teams play back to backs and it is very hard. It is very difficult, which, which is my main point. So suspending um, individual games and postponing them for later is not something that I recommend because I just think it's too much of a hassle for the NBA to do. Uh, there's just too many teams going through this mix. And I just think that, you know, fitting in games left, right in a packed season, um, especially with the amount of games that teams play in a week and the amount of teams that have players in health and safety protocols. I just don't think it's a good idea. At that point, you might as well just suspend the whole season. And that's what I think the, the, the NBA should do. I think there should be a brief pause, a brief hiatus, um, because um, I just think that, you know, it'll allow players who are injured to come back to heal up. And it'll also allow players who are, who are in health and safety protocols to, um, to, to, get, to get recovered. Because, you know, we don't know if these guys are false, these guys are false positive tests or these guys actually have COVID because we have no clue. We're in the dark completely about this. So why not just put the season on like a one week, two week break and just wait for all these guys to get, you know, back to normal, the, the teams. Um, and, you know, who knows? The, the, it might get resolved then. You know, I think this probably could be done over Christmas because Christmas Obviously, NBA plays on Christmas, but, you know, Christmas is usually a, a time for holidays. And, you know, if you want to suspend the season, that's probably the best time to do it. Or maybe prior to All-Star break, maybe in January. I think it should happen, though. I really do, because I don't I don't I don't see this problem going uh, anywhere anytime uh, soon. I, and you can't avoid the inevitable. Um, and, you know, the some people are even saying that this might introduce a bubble for the playoffs again. Now, don't get the bubble jokes going, but, you know, we, 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 we don't know what's going to go on. Like, we, we just we just have to figure some solution out. Um, it's very unfortunate that teams are being depleted left, right and center because of this, uh, uh, these health and safety protocols. And um, this is crazy because if this happens in the playoffs, then, man, we, we, we don't e we don't even know what we're going to do at that point. So I just think that the, the NBA should take a brief hiatus and a brief pause to uh the season and I, I do think that we should be able to uh resume the season in a couple of weeks once teams are you know fully recovered and are fully strengthened um from health and safety protocols 
Um, and yeah, that's basically my main argument for this. Make sure you guys let me know what your main argument down in the comment section is. I do briefly want to talk about this heat game against the Cavs because um, this is a very, it is going to be a good game. You know, the Cavs are a team that has already beaten the heat once this season, um, obviously without Jimmy and Bam, but they have beaten us. Uh, but I just think that the heat, it, it might, it might be a different game because the heat are playing a lot better than they were when Jimmy and Bam were first out. I think the first game that we played um, without Jimmy and Bam was against the Cavs. It was on December 1st, and we played the Cavs then, and the Cavs beat us, and I just think we were just trying to figure out how to adjust without our two best players. We we, we have a rhythm now. We do have a rhythm because we have beaten two playoff teams back-to-back -back in the Bucks and the Bulls, and the Cavs are another playoff team. Um, it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting. The Cavs do not have anyone in health and safety protocols, so I think Lowry Markkinen was in health and safety protocols, and I, I think he's 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 back now. Um, he, he played against us, obviously. So um, it's gonna be an interesting game, man. We, we all know the Cavs run this big lineup, and we have to make sure we uh, combat that. Um, like I said, you know, it's going to be it's it's going to be a, a fun watch because I do think that uh, Evan Mobley is one of my favorite players in the NBA. And um, I just like how, you know, he is he is going to be a handful uh, because not only do you have him, but you're going to have Larry Markin and you're going to have um, Jared Allen. So on the glass, they're going to be a trouble. They're going to be trouble on the glass because we have to make sure we box out. Um, if the lineup is the same as we ran against the Bulls, it's going to be a smaller lineup. Gabe Vincent, Kyle Lowry, Robinson, Tucker, and Deadman. If that is the lineup that we're going to be running with as a starting lineup, I don't know who's going to be guarding who. They're probably going to put Duncan on Lowry Markkinen, um, put PJ Tucker on either Mobley or Allen, and put Deadman on the other one. That is a big size mismatch down low, uh, and they're, they're going to try to take advantage of it. They obviously have uh, uh, Darius Garland and Isaac Okoro in their starting lineup as well. Colin Sexton is out for basically the season because of a torn meniscus, but um, that, it's going to be it's going to be it's going to be a fun watch off the bench. They do have some guys uh, with experience. Uh, Ricky Rubio, Ricky Rubio has been playing pretty well this season. He um, he had a 37 point game if you guys remember that. Um, and I, I just I just think he's been playing some good basketball. Um, their team in general has been playing has been one of the surprises of the league. You know, they still have uh, Jetty Osmond, who's back, who did not play against the Heat in the, the first time. Um, he's been pretty solid off the bench and you still have Kevin Love as well. Um, so they, they don't really run that deep of rotation. It's really four guys deep with Osmond, Rubio, Love and Dean Wade. Um, so they're going to run a nine man rotation. They're a very interesting team. They're a very interesting team, and we have to make sure that we are on our A game because they can beat us. Uh, and, and I wouldn't be surprised if they are the favorites in this game because they're fully healthy um, without, obviously, Colin Sexton. And we don't have Jimmy, Bam, uh, Morris, Oladipo, now Caleb Martin. Like, none of these guys are on our team right now. So um, next man up mentality, man. Uh, let's see if we can pull out a win against the Cavs. It's going to be tough, but I think we can do it. Um, let me know your score predictions for that uh, in the comment section below. And uh, like I said, coming back to the first point, the first main part of the video, let me know what your thoughts are about NBA suspending the season, whether it should happen or not. Um, and that's where we're going to wrap up the video. So uh, leave a like, subscribe, comment down below. Peace.